Hey everyone, I'm David and Happy New Year. Today is actually my YouTube anniversary, which back on the last day of 2006, I posted my very first Ocarina video with my new 12-hole Zelda Ocarina that I had no idea how to use. Fast forward to the present where in 2014 we reached over 100,000 subscribers on this channel, which was incredible. I also got to tour the West Coast doing a couple concerts with my buddy Evan Yanagida. <laughs> Then I got to tour the Midwest and East Coast with Songbird Ocarina just to visit anime and comic book conventions, to show off parts of their collection, and then also to teach you guys how to play the Ocarina face to face. It was so great to meet many of you guys in 2014, but I was overwhelmed by the amount of people who told me that they got interested in Ocarinas and learned how to play from my videos. I love teaching you guys music theory and helping you further in your Ocarina progress, so in honor of that, I'm very happy to announce that starting this Tuesday, I'm bringing back Octalk, which was my series of music tutorials for the Ocarina in music music in general. If there's a specific topic you guys would like me to teach about, just leave a comment down below to let me know what that is, whether it be just from how to hold an ocarina correctly, to how to read ocarina tabs, or even how to play complicated double and triple ocarinas. I'd love to know what you guys would like to learn, and I will get started on those immediately. But to kick off 2015, I was hoping to do a collection video, but that would be impossible because all my ocarinas are packed away right now. But for this video, I'm going to go over my top 10 favorite ocarinas. These are the ocarinas that I use on the road when I'm performing live or in a lot of my videos. So you guys have probably seen a lot of these already before. And the way that I'm going to go over these ocarinas is it's just my favorite ocarina in each range or category, starting with the Soprano C, Soprano G, Alto C, Alto G slash Alto F, Bass C, Bass G, Contra Bass C, Double, Triple, and Harmony ocarinas. Most of these ocarinas are still available today. Some of them are a little bit harder to get than others, but I'll try to leave some links in the descriptions of where you can find them online. And without further ado, let's start with the Soprano C category. This first ocarina is the Akitagawa RTSC or RT Soprano C, which is a uh, part of their professional model series. It's a company in Japan that sells uh, not only ocarinas, but a bunch of different instruments, but uh, they, they're probably one of the premier ocarina makers in Japan. Uh, as you can see, it actually has 13 holes, three sub holes, which allows it to go down to the low G, which is very rare uh, in the 12 hole market or transverse ocarina market. So I love this feature of the, um, it allows you to put like a neck strap or a cord through there so that you can hang it on a wall or wear it whenever you're not playing it. Uh, it just feels really good with these indents here to get to the sub holes, just kind of on the surface. Um, which makes that a little bit easier. And what's also cool about the sub holes is that if you want to go down to the low A, you can either do the Taiwanese style like this or the Japanese style, whatever you're more comfortable with. And then you do both for playing that low G. It also labels uh, the finger holes just like traditional ocarinas do, uh, which is which is still pretty cool. Um, Okitagawa or Akita ocarinas are some of the oldest in the world. They started back in the 1920s. Yeah, they've been going for a long while. And uh, if you can get your hands on these, whether uh, probably through the Amazon Japanese website or through a friend who lives in Japan, they're definitely worth it, especially the RT Professional Series. For the Soprano G category, I'm going with my Hardwood G Inline Ocarina by Mountain Ocarinas. This is actually one of three ocarinas that I always carry with me. I just love how durable Mountain Ocarinas are. They're beautiful to look at. They're, it's got this really cool gloss uh, coating on the top, but you can see the Hardwood Inlay is just like very pretty to look at. And they come in, in a couple different colors. Uh, they also have a C model. Uh, but I love the way that their G model sounds. It carries very well. The volume is really great. Um, the neck cord is also very nice. It's uh, and it's kind of like a plastic coating. I actually kind of ripped it a little bit here and I put some tape on it. Uh, but it comes apart very nicely, very easily, and it locks into place so you won't drop it. And even if you do drop it, it's not it's not gonna arrange majorly hurt these ocarinas. These ocarinas are pretty indestructible. <laughs> I love the inline design and just how compact the ocarina is. The the one different thing is the sub hole compared to uh, like transverse ocarinas and the um, 
behind in line ocarina and that this goes down to a low G and it gives you one sub hole that you cover when you want to get that low F sharp. And it's supposed to go up to a B, but you can actually overblow it to get to a C, which is very rare with ocarinas. You can't usually overblow, but this actually overblows very nicely to an extra note at the top. So you would just go uh, G, A, B, and then blow it a little bit stronger to, to get that C, and it plays perfectly. And this ocarina is one of the few that can fit into your pocket, and you don't have to worry about it getting damaged in any way. In the Alto C category, I was torn between these two, so I'm going to talk about both very quickly. Um, this is my Mop Rom Alto C, which you've seen in a lot of my videos. It's one of my favorite ocarinas to play uh, live and also in recording. It just has a really great tone. Um, it uses the Japanese style sub holes, um, and it's just, it feels really good in the hands. This is a really cool design in the clay as well, which has, has a, a room for an, uh, a chord or a neck strap, so if you want to wear it or hang it on a wall, that's perfect. The unfortunate thing about these is that they are no longer made. The maker retired a couple years ago, so these are very difficult to get your hands on these days. They're very expensive if you find them on, on eBay or um, from a, a, a used seller, um, but they're great. They sound fantastic. I used them on my CD uh, that I released last year, and I just love this ocarina to death. The only thing I, I don't really like about this ocarina is the color. It just... I don't know, I'm just not a fan of that skin tone on an ocarina. But other than that, it's a great ocarina. Since this is no longer available, I also love um, this Alto C by Charlie Hind. This is probably one of my most beautiful ocarinas that I own. And it's a uh, coca bowl of wood uh, with cherry inlay there on the side, which is gorgeous. It is a uh, 11 hole, I believe, um, in that... Technically, it's 12 holes, but it has a split pinky hole, so you could go C, C sharp, D a lot easier than half holing to get that low one, and then it has one sub hole here to get to the low B, which is also very nice. Um, this is also one of my most expensive Alto Cs. It's a little over 300. I think it's 325, but Charlie makes some gorgeous ocarinas. These are one of the few soft-blown ocarinas that I own, uh, meaning that you blow softly on the low notes as well as softly on the high notes, and they're gorgeous in tone and gorgeous in look and they're just uh they're so beautiful For the Alto F slash Alto G category, I'm going with my 10 Hole Muse by Songbird Ocarina. Um, I've had this ocarina for a couple years. It's tuned in the key of F, and it's just one of the most beautiful designs I have. Uh, I love that it was inspired by a sculpture um, by this uh, sculptist in, in California, and it's just, uh, she's beautiful. She feels really good in the hand as well. I love how this is incorporated in the design. You can kind of see how her, her hair gives you a place to grab the finger holes. The same thing on this side as well. That's just, that was a really genius design. And the tone is amazing. I love how deep, just how resonant this tone is. It's beautiful. And all the ocarinas from here are just going to have like a really uh, deep resonant tone from the alto F down to the contrabass, which we'll get to in a minute. I love running my fingers over where the hair designs are. And even the face is just really interesting. For the base C category, I'm going with my 12 hole Noble base C ocarina in black finish. Uh, it also comes in a more kind of a tannish finish, but I really liked the way that the black looks. This is from a company in Korea, Noble Ocarina, and they make a variety of sizes ocarinas. It's, they mostly focus on septets, uh, which is the ocarina ensemble. 
And just the finish that they use on their ocarina is, is really cool. I love the way it feels. It kind of feels like a silky finish. Um, and you can kind of see the grains a little bit in the clay, which is awesome. It's not really a problem so much as it is just something to be aware of. But on the larger ocarinas, you're going to have larger holes that you need to cover. So like with the thumb holes, you can see that they're, they're pretty... They're pretty ginormous, but as long as you cover like this with your thumbs over where the belt, where the um, oval shapes are, you shouldn't have a problem. It's the same with the pinky and the ring finger. So not everyone's going to have a comfortable hold on these things. Um, so that's something to keep in mind if you have smaller hands. But I love the sound of this bass ocarina. It's, this is one of the only bass ocarinas that are very affordable and widely available. And Noble in Korea is very uh, willing to ship internationally. So... This is my favorite bass scene. In the bass G category, we're going with one of my personal favorites. Um, for all my lower ocarinas, I give names to, and this is Mr. Turtleberg. He's made by Langley Ocarina. He's a G ocarina, and I call him Mr. Turtleberg because he looks like he's a turtle shell and also a burger. Like, it's the size of a giant burger. So this is Mr. Turtleberg. He actually has a few videos of his own, which are very silly, so if you Google that or go into YouTube and search it, you'll find them. Um, and this is... A soft blown ocarina in a low G, and it uses six holes, but this is actually only for a sharp. So this would be high G, A, A sharp, or B flat. It doesn't go up to a full whole tone, so it's just a semitone hole. And it's a great ocarina. I love the deep tone. Uh, it is soft blown, so it's not totally my preference when it comes to breath pressure. Uh, but this is one of the more affordable uh, contrabass Gs that I could find when I was trying to record with it. So I've, I've recorded a lot of septet and sextet stuff with him. Uh, and um, yeah, he's a great sounding ocarina. And I just love um, how easy it is to play for no matter how big your hands are. The holes are actually not that big. So uh, most people would have a comfortable time with this ocarina. And it's a great bass ocarina if you can get your hands on it. Finally, one of the newest members of my family, the Claudio Colombo 9-hole Contrabass C. This ocarina is massive, as you can tell by my hands. I have I have fairly large hands. This ocarina is just, like, you can barely wrap your hands around it. Um, but it is a fantastic sounding ocarina. I wouldn't recommend to anyone who has smaller hands, but medium to large hands should hold it okay. It's just, you just gotta properly grip it. The only problem is if you have smaller hands, like I said with the bass C, um, you will not be able to cover these holes. I can barely fit my thumb over this, that one. Um, this one's okay. And then you have the um, middle finger one there. I can actually, I can barely cover that one as well. But it sounds amazing. Uh, it's kind of quiet. So I, when I'm recording, I got to get kind of close to the microphone. I actually have two contrabass C's uh, this one is the latter of the two, and this is extremely affordable. Most contrabass Cs you won't get for uh, cheaper than 500. I think this one is under 300, and it's just it's an amazing ocarina by Claudio Colombo, and I love it. Mm-hmm.
Now we're getting into the multi chambers, and this is one of my main ocarinas. This is the Moprom Double Alto C, very similar in sound and breath pressure to my uh, 12 hole Alto C from by Moprom as well. Uh, but the the chamber balance between the first and second chamber is just perfect. Uh, it's not extremely loud on the higher uh, chamber. It just sounds. It's just a really well balanced ocarina, and it's a shame that you can't get them anymore. I mean in Korea. That's the serial number in Mopram. A really good double ocarina I'd highly recommend if you like the sound and the breath pressure of these, if you've tried it before, is the Forte Double by Focalink Stein uh, Ocarina, which is available from Slimeboard Ocarina and SteinOcarina.com. It's a little bit heavier than the Mopram, but I love the um, breath pressure on that ocarina and the tone as well. Speaking of Focalink Stein, I have one of my other favorite ocarinas whom I've nicknamed Bianca, uh, which is actually Italian for white. Uh, this is the Focalink Forte Triple in white matte finish, which is a custom finish you can get from SteinOcarina.com. It's a little heavier uh, than I had originally liked, but I got used to it fairly, uh, I was going to say fairly quickly, it actually took me a while to get used to this ocarina's weight. Um, but it's a gorgeous ocarina. The tone is very, very pretty. Very similar to the Mopram. It's a little bit darker. And the breath pressure is a little bit stronger than most of their ocarinas, which I really like. It really projects well when performing on stage or with other musicians. So you don't need a triple ocarina too often, but when you do, and if you're trying to practice a lot of keys, this is one of my favorites to play. And last but not least, in the Harmony Ocarina category, I have my Wooden Double by North Country Workshop, uh, or Cynthia Smith. And this is a fantastic Harmony Ocarina. It's based on the four-hole English pendant system, uh, and so uh, you have that for each hand. And what's really cool about this ocarina, and I've recommended to a few people, is that some people actually don't have full use of either the right or their left hand so they can only play with one hand. This ocarina is perfect for only playing for playing a full octave with only one chamber. And you can actually choose which chamber you want to play in. You just need to uh, cover, cover this side with your mouth or cover this side or cover both. And um, this ocarina was made famous by Nancy Rumble, who's a good friend of mine and uh, who's been recording ocarina music for uh, almost 30 years. So she is a pro at this ocarina if you want to see what it can really do. Uh, she's amazing with it, and this ocarina is amazing as well. I just love how easy it is to play the harmonies together. Um, the lower chamber for this one is tuned in D, the higher chamber is in G, but she makes them in three different sizes. And then this is the soprano size, I believe. It doesn't squeak or anything at all. It's just a very pleasant tone. Uh, the chambers are perfectly balanced, and I just love the size of this thing. It's so compact. It can fit in your pocket if you wanted to, and it just sounds great. Left side. Right side. Together. This is actually a bonus 
11th Ocarina. This is uh, one of the pendants that I always carry with me just because it's Zelda related. This is by Songbird Ocarina and it's very cute. It's tuned in the key of B flat. It has a really awesome tone and it's perfect just wearing off to show your Zelda fandom. Guys, it's going to cover it for this video. If you're new to this channel, I'd love it if you subscribed. I have a bunch of new tutorial and music videos coming up that you're not going to want to miss. Thank you guys so much. Keep making music, and I will see you guys in the next video.